discuss what does it mean to be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This is a very famous passage in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. We're going to look at that in this video. Okay, we've been working through the books of 1 and 2 Thessalonians, but we're just looking at the prophecy in those books. There's 136 total verses in those two books. 50 of those verses involve end-time prophecy. In this video, we're looking at why are we caught up in the clouds and in the air? What's the significance of the clouds? And what's the significance of the air? Please consider subscribing to this channel, and let's move on in this study. Before we move on, we've just another reminder about end-time prophetic events. After the time of the cross, there's what's this long period of time called the church age. Right at the end of the church age, there's an apostasy. We're in that now. Churches are falling apart. They're going apostate. They're standing off from the truth of the Bible. That ushers us right into the Great Tribulation where the man of sin, the Antichrist, is all on the scene. We have the abomination of desolation. And that's a little season of time. And then it's the last day, which is Judgment Day, the Day of Salvation. And it's this time that Christians are caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And that brings us into eternity where we dwell with God in the new heavens and the new earth. So here's the passage that we're going to look at. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we want to look at this idea about the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We which are alive and remain, those there'll be many people, there'll be millions of Christians that are alive when Christ returns. We, we're going to be caught up. It's the Greek word harpazo. It literally means to be plucked up or caught up. We have a video on the rapture or the resurrection. We Please take a look at that video. I'll tag it on the slide. The word rapture is not found in the Bible, but it explains exactly what to be caught up means. It's really the resurrection in the clouds and in the air. We're going to look at what that means in this video. So we're going to look at clouds and air. First of all, clouds symbolize glory. Clouds are a beautiful, glorious thing. Second Chronicles 5, 7, the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord into his place, to the Oracle of the house, into the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. The bringing of the Ark of the Covenant, the most holy object. We've done a video on the Ark of the Covenant. I'll tag that on this slide. It's the presence of God in the his, the glory of his covenant of grace and mercy through the witness and offering of the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. Please look at that tag video. and It unpacks what the Ark of the Covenant really is. But a few verses after that, we find as the trumpeters and singers were as one, they lifted up their voice and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good. His mercy endures forever. Then that house was filled with a cloud. A cloud, even the house of the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant is brought into the house of the Lord, into the temple that was built by Solomon, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. And the cloud represents, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house. That cloud, obviously and clearly, re refers to the glory of God. We also see other passages as we look in the New Testament about clouds of glory. We know that Jesus Christ, when he returns, he comes with the clouds. We've already seen that in 1 Thessalonians 4, but we see it in Revelation 1, 7. Matthew 24, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The clouds are a glorious thing. We see... Also in Acts 1, when Jesus Christ was ascended after the cross, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Two men stood behind by them in white apparel, which also said, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He was in a glorified state. In glory, he went up to heaven. And in glory, he comes with the clouds of heaven, which represent glory. And we see when Jesus Christ ascended in Acts 1, 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preaching to the Gentiles, 
believed on the world, he was received up into glory. It's that cloud that took him up into glory. Clouds in the Bible represent glory. It's also important to understand that Christians, when we meet Christ in the air, we're going to be in glory with him. Christians are to be glorified as we're caught up together with Christ into the clouds. It represents the glory of God, the glory of Christ, but it also represents the fact that we will be with him in glory. Note for 2 Corinthians 4, 17. For our light affliction in this world, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Eternal weight of glory. And we receive that at this return of Christ. Romans 8, 18. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. When we're caught up together in Christ, that glory will be revealed. We'll be with Christ in glory. We'll be in the clouds of glory. Romans 9, 23, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Those vessels of mercy are Christians. He makes known the riches of glory. We will be glorified, which he afore prepared unto glory. We were prepared before the foundation of the world unto glory, and we receive that when we're caught up into the air to meet Christ in the clouds of glory. Before we go on to see why we meet Christ in the clouds and in the air, the scripture in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 says that we come in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We, it's important to understand that one more aspect of glory, and that's the fact that the gospel, the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ is glorious. Note 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world, which is Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious, the gospel of Christ is glorious, the, who is the image of God should shine unto them. We see that the gospel, the word of salvation, the message of salvation is glorious. Because we see in 2 Thessalonians 2, 14, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we obtain that glory when we meet Christ in the clouds, but it's also in the air. It's also in the air. Keep that in mind because we're going to look at the air in the next slide. And again, 1 Timothy 1.11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. The gospel is glorious and we hear the gospel. We hear the gospel and the gospel brings us that glory or that salvation when we meet Christ in the clouds in the air. Now let's turn and look at what air, how it's used in the Bible. The word air, the air that we breathe. When we look at the Old Testament, it's it comes from the, uh, two different Hebrew words, and it can be from the word shame, which usually is translated heavens, the heavens above us. And there's three heavens: the 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 air that we breathe, the stars, but then there's the real heaven, where it's spiritual, where God is. All three heavens are used the same word that's tr sometimes translated as air. The other Hebrew word requia, it, it's always translated as firmament. It's firmament, like during the story of creation. It's the space where the stars and the suns and the moon exist. It's the air where the birds fly. And it's the space above the living creatures and a vision Ezekiel had and all that has spiritual meaning. So in the Old Testament, we, we just see that this word air is normally translated from words that are usually called either heaven or firmament. But to find out the spiritual meaning of air, we find that in the New Testament, which we're going to look at on the next slide. When we look at the word air in the New Testament, we see seven occurrences. Well, it's where dust is thrown from morning, where we speak into the air, we receive the gospel. We There's there's an analogy about fighting and beating the air. We, ha, we know that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. It's where we meet Christ in the last day. In the book of Revelation, the air is darkened. The last day, the seven ball judgment was poured into the air. So we want to understand the symbolism of why the air, what's the significance of it, and we're going to do that right now. So when we go back to the Old Testament and look at the combination of clouds being in the air, and again, remember air is the same Hebrew word as heaven, we see, for example, that it always points to the fact that there's rain that comes from those clouds. Judges 5.4, Lord, when you marched, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped, the clouds dropped water, rain. 
Who can number the clouds in wisdom? Who can stay the bottles of heaven? The bottles is where liquid is. Psalm 78, though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, referring to rain. Psalm 147, who covers the heaven with clouds? Who prepares rain for the earth? Who makes grass to grow upon the mountains? And we're going to see there's a lot of spiritual meaning, but for now, recognize that the clouds and the air is what produces rain. So when we look, take a step further, when we think about the rain that comes from the air, that comes from the clouds, we see it symbolizes the gospel of the word of God. And again, the clouds of God, God comes from the clouds of glory. The air is where the clouds are. The air and the clouds produce rain, produce rain. And that's the word of God. It's the gospel. It's salvation. Christ comes glorious with the salvation for his people. It's a glorious thing. It's the glorious gospel of God. We see these passages, Isaiah 55, for us the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth the bud that it may give seed, the seed of the word of God, to the sower and bread to the eater. The word of God is also referred to as bread. So shall my word, my word, the gospel, the Bible, be that goes forth out of my mouth. It comes out like rain, rain from the clouds. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing where do I sent it. Rain is a symbol of the gospel. Deuteronomy 32, give ear, O ye heavens. Again, that word heavens can be also translated as air. And I will speak, speak in the word of God and hear or the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. Rain is a symbol for the word of God. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and the showers upon the grass. Beautiful picture. The gospel of God is as the rain that comes from the air, and it comes from the clouds of glory. We also see more information in the Bible about the latter rain. The latter rain, and we've done a video on this. Please uh, look at the video I've tagged in this slide. But the cloud of the latter rain brings the end time, last day. It's the gospel. It's the gathering of God's people and the final harvest. It's a beautiful spiritual picture. We see that the king's favor or grace is as a cloud of the latter rain. Again, God's grace comes by the gospel. Note James 5. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain, be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. In this video we've done, we looked at that and we found that the early rain is the word of God. It's the salvation of, of the spirit of the Christian. The latter rain, again, it's the word of God. It's the salvation of the soul and body. Again, take a look at the tagged video in this slide and let's move on in this study. Okay, so the air, more, more information we have, the air represents where the gospel is spoken. Note 1 Corinthians 14, 9. So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words, easy to be understood, how shall be known what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. The air is what transmits waves, sound waves. It's where communication occurs. That's where the gospel occurs. It's the hearing of the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. We speak and we speak into the air. Not as pleasing men, but God which tries our hearts. Nobody can hear anything without the air. Because that's where the gospel is. Second Corinthians 2.17 We are as not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as sincerity, but as God in the sight of God. We speak in Christ. It's where the word of God, the gospel, comes from. Now, of course, in the air we have a nemesis. We have an adversary that darkens that air. It, it tries to fool people. It tries to change the gospel. It tries to prevent the gospel. The air is darkened by Satan. Ephesians 2, 2, where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. He has the power of the air, the power of communication, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air, all of the things that we hear, all of the communication we receive, it's worldly communication, it's source of Satan. 
And that's why in Revelation 9, 2, and I'll tag a video we've done on this passage as well. He opened the bottomless pit. There arose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And that's referring to the time of the great tribulation. It's the, it's, it has to do with opening the pit where Satan is again released during that time of the great tribulation. It, Satan is our nemesis. He affects the air as well. But the air is clarified for us. On that last day, it's a day of salvation. The air is made clear. There's a judgment that occurs in the air. Revelation 16, 17, the seventh ball judgment of Revelation, the seventh angel poured out his ball or vial into the air. There came a great voice saying, it's done, it's done. And we know that this last day, we meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. And we see also in Zechariah 10, ask the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord shall make bright clouds, bright clouds again, the clouds of glory, and give them showers of rain. And we see a little bit later in that passage that it has to do with restoration, has to do with salvation. I will strengthen the house of Judah. I will save the house of Joseph. I will have mercy upon them. I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. Their hearts shall rejoice. I will gather them. That's the last day, the gathering, being caught up together in the clouds of glory. In the air, I have redeemed them. And they shall increase as they have and they shall increase as they have increased it's a wonderful beautiful day of salvation the air on that last day is a place of the clouds of glory the final summation of the gospel the salvation of god's people and on that last day we will be saved the salvation of our soul right now in the body we're saved in the spirit ephesians 2 1 5 and others i'll tag a video we've done on that but on the last day, we're saved. Our souls are saved. Future tense on that last glorious day, the clouds of glory. We're saved in the air, for God is not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. In this body, we have, we're saved in the spirit, awaiting the final salvation. We are, Hebrews 10, 39, we are not of them that draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul, the saving of the soul in the future on that last day. Hebrews 9, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, that last day. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him. And we as Christians in faith look to Christ. Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? It's the last day, the beautiful, glorious salvation of the Christian soul where we're united body, spiritual body, soul and spirit, all one in a glorified state. Just a quick summary about being caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Clouds point to glory. It's the glorious second coming of Jesus Christ. It's the glorious gospel of salvation, the salvation of our soul where we're glorified with Christ on the last day. The air points to the place of communication. It's the gospel of salvation. The clouds are in the air. The clouds provide rain. It's the latter rain of that final day of the final harvest. Salvation on the last day. It's a beautiful portrait with very much rich meaning. We're going to move on to the next video. We're going to look at what are prophetic times and seasons. What does it mean when we read in the Bible times and seasons? We're going to learn that in the next video. Please consider subscribing. And thank you very much for watching this video.